and his website part three, images and form styling. In this lesson, we'll learn three new things, how to include the logo image, how to add a background image, and how to style the email input form. At the end of this part, your site will look like this. Nice. Let's get started. Logo image. Adding an image is easy. Just use the image tag. Replace the h1 tag with image source. Okay, so h1 tag, we're going to do image source equals slash assets slash anna.png. So let's get rid of this. And that added a picture of Anna. I did it. The image tag uses the image located at the URL and the source attribute. Okay. Asset slash Anna slash PNG. Good to know. Hmm. Asset slash Anna slash PNG doesn't look like URL to me. Don't URLs need a domain like my site in them? Good question. There are actually two types of URLs, absolute and relative. Absolute URLs are the types of links you're used to. They include HTTP dot slash slash and the full domain name before the directory. Relative URL are shortcuts that allow you to skip the domain name. It only works if you're linking to a file on the same domain as the current page. Okay. Didn't know that. Background image. Remember the background property from earlier, we use it to make the body's background a color black, but you can also use it to change the background to an image. You can set the background to an image like this. URL should be set to an actual path to an image file. Okay, change the background from black to URL. Uh, let me see how that went. URL and then in parentheses URL. So exactly like it tells me to do and no dots. So we're going to do URL slash assets slash Anna dash BG dot PNG. Delete that. Oh no, I guess I need that. Okay, I did it. Great. Now let's make the background image look a little better on the page. This is how you prevent the background from appearing tiled. Does it appear tiled now? Yeah, I guess it kind of does. Well, I don't see it, but if we scrolled, we could probably see it. Set the background size to cover. So, background size cover. Nice. This will center the background image on the page. Background position centers it. Set the background position to center. It. form styles. So far we've only applied styles to the body tag. Let's get more specific and start applying styles to other elements. Let's make the paragraphs font a little bigger. Okay so body and then underneath body we would do that. So right there. Set the paragraphs font size to 22 pixels. So we need to do P this and then font size 22 pixels and that worked so we've got to close it did it by setting border to zero we can get rid of some of the default styling on our inputs I don't really see that but let's do it so input Zero. Close that guy off. Padding is the amount of space between the edge of an element and the stuff inside it. Let's even it out for both input elements and set it to 10 pixels. So let's go here and do padding 10 pixels. See how it's changing the size of the input box there? I'm going to 
Okay. Let's increase the font size to make it more proportionate to the rest of the text. Okay, so font size, 18 pixels. Almost done. Let's make the call to action button nice and bright red, then we'll be finished. You can select an element by one of its attributes using square brackets like this. Okay, input type submit. So, here we go. Oh, I guess it did. That's a different input. For example, you could select the email input using either input or input placeholder. Both would work. Set the submit input's color to white. Set the submit input's background to red. So type submit background okay so we're going to do input square brackets type equals submit close up the square brackets and then that one we're going to do background red and then the color of the text white and then we need to close it nice wow my new website looks great i love it i'm recommending you to all my friends if they need any web work done thanks anna Great work, you just learned the basics of CSS.